We believed that we were bringing something that was um, unique and had, uh, was meeting a big unmet need in the market. Joining me now is Phil Smith uh, from 4D Biomaterials. So obviously you've been at the show and you've been walking around and um, we've had a little discussion on kind of the thoughts and trends, but more of that to come later. First of all, perhaps you can explain um, the concept of 4D Biomaterials, how you came about obviously from the University of Birmingham. So yeah, give us a little bit of background. Thank you. Um, well, 4D, as, as the name suggests, 3D plus fourth dimension. Uh, so 3D is obviously for 3D printing, and the fourth dimension relates to the change of shape of the 3D printed device over time. Um, firstly by degradation, um, and secondly by shape memory. So these materials have been developed over 15 years, initially at the University of Warwick, and then at Birmingham. Um, and spun out into a, a company, 40 Biomaterials, in April last year. And the, the vision was to develop a, a, a new range of resorbable polymers that will ultimately help people heal in, in, in various um, applications and after various types of surgery. Um, resorbable polymers have been around for decades and have been used in things like resorbable stitches or sutures uh, and various other formats. Uh, but our, our founders um, started 15 years ago thinking actually we think we can work out something better that will overcome some of the limitations of those materials. And the first limitation was uh, being able to 3D print them into very fine structures so you can make precise geometries of um, scaffold that helps promote tissue growth, whether it be soft tissue in, with very um, soft and flexible versions of these materials or a bone with much harder and stiffer versions of these materials. So uh, the founders uh, developed these materials and did the initial biocompatibility testing um, where they proved that these materials were um, biocompatible in a, a wide range of um, cell lines in in vitro testing and also um, some in vivo testing where they showed that the foreign body response was actually much uh, more promising than the um, polyester based material benchmarks which were typical of the existing materials um, and also their degradation behavior uh, was also uh, less problematic um, with the existing materials there's a risk that um, byproducts can accumulate such as um, lactic acid and glycolic acid and when they're ultimately released they can cause complications such as pain and inflammation in the patient and the new materials that we're making uh, degrade um, progressively uh, into CO2 and, and alcohols which are readily resorbed by the body so the, the hope is that this, these materials will find their way into applications from soft tissue into osteo and orthopedic applications and lead to improved patient experiences uh, with faster healing and of course uh, no permanent uh, implant in the body. So that helps with recovery of, of, of tissue such as bone because metal implants can cause stress shielding which interferes with bone regrowth. Uh, yeah, and, and there's a wide range of things, but we've got to start off with a first indication and get it through clinical trials and approved. Um, but we're already talking to uh, partners in the medical device space and the 3D printing industry about developing um, the product into a, a wide range of potential indication routes. Um, so that's really exciting. Amazing, and um, obviously included in that is the Ford Degra. Um, new material and um, is that what you're showcasing here at, at the show? Yes, um, we're introducing Ford Degra to the international community that is here. Um, we did a small launch of that in Birmingham about a month ago um, and, and that's been very well received here. Um, and we're also promoting uh, a, a specific partnership program which we're calling 4D Plus um, where we're wanting to work with uh, 3D printing companies who have machinery that will work with our materials 
and then go to medical device innovators and say our material is compatible with these machines and that works well in this space. Let's work together, the three of us, to create uh, medical device uh, products that we can then take through clinical trials and then ultimately to market. And the, I think the um, response here has been um, better than we could have hoped for. Um, I think the, the number of people here, the quality of the people here, all the big companies that we might be interested in the 3D printing space are here and the response to what we've, we're, we're, we're offering has been um, really encouraging. Uh, we thought we were unique, we thought our, from our patenting processes and so on and our market research, uh, we believed that we were bringing something that was um, unique and had, uh, was meeting a big unmet need in the market. But all the conversations we've been having here are beginning to sort of confirm that. So that's really reassuring <laughs> uh, for a small company uh, because obviously you're not sure until you really go out yeah, there and, and test and test the world. Yeah. Um, but we're now um, talking to uh, many companies that are here about collaborations going forward. So it's been um, really successful for us. I think a few people have said that to me as well in terms of the quality of um, the people who are here, both you know attendees and exhibitors and. I think people are having you know, very positive conversations, especially after not being able to you know, see people face to face for so long. So I think, yeah, like you say, that's definitely an impression that I had of the show too. Um, but in terms, maybe more generally, um, I'm not sure how much time you've had to be able to walk around some of the other um, halls and booths, but what kind of impressions have, have you got from the show as a whole? I think the um, one, the first impression is the scale. It's, mm -hmm. it's big, it's vast. It's, it's very international, uh, all the big companies that we're aware of seem to be here. Um, there's a real a buzz and a vibe and an excitement, I think, partly that pent-up feeling of two years of not doing this yeah. and we're getting it back together again, which is fantastic. Um, but also I think it's part of the, um, the atmosphere of the sector that there is this um, excitement and, about innovation and uh, the development of this market and this industry. Uh, in particular for us, working in the medical device space or making materials for use in the medical device space, it's been really exciting to see a growing interest in 3D printing for medical devices. So it feels for us like that reaffirms the timing that we're, we're coming to the market at the right time and uh, a lot of the big players in this market are not only looking into this, they're actually making acquisitions and investments in this space. So for us that's a really interesting um, realisation um, and a very encouraging sort of development. So yeah, plus of course seeing these um, funky little remote control 3D printed dogs and oh, things yeah, walking around, mm -hmm. which is uh, <laughs> great and you, you know you wish your kids were here to see those sorts of things. <laughs> There's also a, um, a little go-kart as well um, and lots of, lots of very interesting applications of the technology so it's, it's great because it ranges from so many different things um, and I guess you know going back to the medical sector I mean we're definitely seeing that we're reporting on lots more kind of healthcare applications for the technology things you know within bioprinting materials and different applications as well. Um, but I think from your perspective, I guess, are you seeing that there's kind of much more of a drive, a push towards those kinds of applications It's moving from kind of the lab and research now into actual, you know, becoming part of, of medical care? Perhaps? Yes. Well, we've, we've one of the um, groups of people that's been, been really excited to talk to has been the uh, surgeons and, and medical practitioners and the people that work with 3D printing in, in, in hospitals and, and medical facilities. And I think those people uh, that we've spoken to uh, have been really excited about Fordegra and what they could do with it in the setting of a hospital to actually solve patient problems or improve patient care. And uh, I think we've been focused on the regulatory pathway and, and the, you know, the, the realities of that, which are quite you know, rigorous and, and daunting for a newcomer yeah. in the space. But to actually speak to the people that are 
working with patients at the the sort of you know the end of the of the uh, process has been really interesting and to hear them talk about with such enthusiasm about what they would like to do with these materials and some of that's very surprising because um, sometimes they're talking about using materials in cases where patients are they don't have a lot of options and, and actually the um, the chance of using something that can give someone a chance to have a better outcome uh, is I guess a relatively high risk application and therefore we thought would be in the medium term um, for a new technology we're learning that actually a surgeon faced with doing nothing or doing something might actually choose to do something with a new technology and actually give someone a chance and I think that's that's been a, a really interesting learning opportunity for us. Absolutely and so maybe more broadly um, in the next five years I guess where do you see kind of medical 3D printing but also um, technology generally I mean the 3D printing sector and the adoption of additive manufacturing for all types of applications. Well I, I'll confess that I'm uh, I'm obviously quite a, a, an aging engineer <laughs> and I did my, um, I started working in the engineering industry before 3D printing was really a thing uh, and uh, so I, I, I grew up making things in injection molding machines and, and so on. So I think the transformation from 3D printing arriving as a prototyping or rapid prototyping tool to becoming something that is actually offering um, a very diverse range of manufacturing opportunities across a very, di very diverse range of sectors and enabling people to do things that can't be done in any other way and then taking it from small scale into volume. I think that, that evolution and, and maturing of the industry is really fascinating and I think the, the, uh, for in our particular sector I think that we will see um, as, as regulators and the, the um, health community become more familiar with 3D printed medical devices and they become um, de-risked, I think we will see a, a wider adoption of, of these technologies and uh, benefits for the patients that ultimately use them. Um, so I'm really excited about um, seeing that work through and seeing patients benefit from um, faster healing and um, solutions that otherwise they wouldn't have access to today. So yeah, I think it's technology um, that's really uh, coming of age. Well, thank you so much for sharing your time with us and it's been great to you know, find out more about 4D Biomaterials and everything that you're doing and getting your perspectives on the show. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you.